All right, students. So in problem number seven, uh, what we're going to do is uh, compute a confidence interval. The situation states that a research institution poll asks respondents if they felt vul uh, vulnerable to identify, uh, uh, sorry, if they felt vulnerable to identity theft, my bad. Uh, in the poll, N is equal to 1,068, so that's your sample size. X is equal to 542, right? So X equals 542 is who said yes. Use a 95% confidence level. Uh, so to do parts A through C, I will show you how we can sort of get these answers using the calculator. Um, part A states to find the best point estimate of the population proportion. So just note uh, underneath the best point estimate, of the population proportion is going to be your sample proportion, uh, which you can always compute by doing um, x over n. So sample proportion, which we denote as p hat, is always x over n. But again, the graphing calculator helps you to get this value as well. Um, you also have to find the margin of error in part b. Um, for, for, for the formula that I wrote out here, by the way, um, this formula only applies if you already know what's the confidence interval. If you know what's the confidence interval, it's going to be upper limit minus lower limit, right? The two up, uh, your, your two bounds, the upper bound minus the lower bound, subtract those two values first, and then cut it in half, divide it by two. That's how you can get the margin of error. That part we have to actually do manually. For the confidence interval, it's in the form of p hat minus e less than p, which is the population's proportion, which is less than p hat uh, plus e. Now, for the confidence interval, when we're going to write it out, we're just going to write the lower bound is less than the true value, uh, the, the, sorry, the population proportion less than the upper bound. And again, those lower and upper bound values, we can get it in the calculator. So how do I get those values in the calculator? Well, to find the confidence interval in the TI-84, what you will need to do is first press stat, then select tests or scroll over to tests, select one proportion Z in. So that will be like your fifth, op, uh, your fifth option in the menu and press enter. And then all you gotta do is enter the values of X and C level. And then you select calculate and press enter, right? So observe. Um, well, what you're going to ultimately see, right, is that you will have this box. Oops, sorry, that's a bad box. Let me just get rid of it. Okay, so you're going to have a box. That box represents your screen. And on your screen, you need to label what's your X, N, and C level. So the problem tells you exactly what these three things are. Uh, X is the 542 and N is going to be your 1068. So you have 542, 1068. Confidence level is going to be 95% or 0.95. So when I do, when I follow these four steps that I wrote out how to find the confidence interval, um, essentially, you're going to have this screen first, and then it's going to spit some things out, right? So I'm going to show you what it spits out, and then how we can use what spits out um, to solve parts A through D. Okay, so how do, how do I do this again? Well, first step, you press stat, go to calc, um, sorry, you select tests. Now, from the test menu, you do one proportion Z tests. And then you enter your values. So I'm just going to clear the ones that I have. Uh, so my first value, um, sorry, oops, my bad, wrong one. I have to do second vars, no, bleh, stat, followed by tests. I got to scroll down to one proportion Z in. So it's the option A. My apologies. The one that I just showed before, that was an error that's actually used for problem eight. Um, so for now, we're doing uh, one proportion Z in, and you enter your values. Uh, so it's 542, you have N is 1068, 
and then sea level is 0 0.95, right? That's their confidence level was 95%. So as a decimal, make sure you write it as a decimal, 0 0.95. You hit calculate. So you get these things. You get your lower and you get your upper, right? So you have lower is equal to some value, yada, yada, yada. Upper is equal to some value, yada, yada, yada. You have p hat equals something, something, and then n is equal to whatever. So first thing to note is that in this problem, right, part A asks us for the best point estimate. So your best point estimate is always going to be your sample proportion, p hat. So for p hat um, is given to you in your table, uh, p hat is going to be point, if you round it to three decimal places, point or 0 0.507. That's your best point estimate. So that's the solution to part A. Now for part B, the margin of error, we need to, um, when we're doing this on the calculator, we take the upper bound minus the lower bound, and then we divide that by two. So for the upper bound, um, if you round the second value that shows up on your screen here, uh, if you round it to three decimal places, the upper limit would be 0 0.537. And the lower bound rounded to three decimal places would be 0 0.478. So 0 0.478. And we divide that by two. So your calculator tells you what's your lower and upper. Okay, so I'm going to hit clear or second mode just to clear it, and then I'm going to do this calculations. So you get 0 0.537 minus 0 0.478, divide that answer by 2, right? So you get 0 0.059 on top, divide this by 2, uh, you get approximately 0 0.30, right? If you just round this to uh, three decimal places, uh, the five tells the nine to go up. Um, the, the five tells the nine to go up. So the next number after nine would be technically 10. Or more importantly, the next number after 29 would be 30. Uh, so that's your margin of error. All right. Now, in part C, you just got to write out the confidence interval. So the confidence interval, again, is going to be the lower bound less than uh, the population's proportion, uh, less than um, the upper bound. So your lower bound would have been 0 0.478 is less than P, less than 0 0.537. And that will be your solution so far to parts A, B, and C. Part D is where you do your interpretation. Um, so on the sample final, we have uh, the answer choices to select, uh, but it could be very possible that your professor says, hey, you know what, you actually got to write this out, so you have to know it. Um, so the way that your sentence usually works, um, it, or it follows in this following format, is, it, it goes like this. We say that we are, you write out the value of your um confidence level as a percentage. So we say we are 95% confident that the true value of the population proportion is between Um, the lower bound, which is 0.478, to uh, the value of your upper bound, which is 0.537. Um, the only thing that's going to change in these uh, in, in this statement when you have to do the interpretation part, the only thing that's going to change or may change are the value of the confidence level, right? It could be 90, 95, or 99. And your lower bound and upper bound values. Those are the only three things that uh, will change the numbers, basically. The wording 
like for example, we are confident that the true value of the population proportion is between blank to blank. Like everything there that's written in black, um, that's that's pretty much going to stay. Whatever is in uh, blue, that that's what's going to change. All right. So that's how you do problem number seven in your TI eighty four.